Good morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Suffer Alliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And Gypsy and I drove the Jeep out to a campground area that's a privately owned camp area on a lake that's owned by AEP, which is a power company here in Ohio. And this place is about two and a half hours ish, two hours from the school property. But it's a nice little lake, very small campground. There's about 10 primitive sites here, but several of them are right on the lake. So we've chosen a campsite. I brought some things out here from Sportsman's Guide. Sportsman's Guide is one of the distributors or dealers of Pathfinder merchandise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of the merchandise sold by Sportsman's Guide in conjunction with some Pathfinder gear this weekend. We're gonna do a little fishing. We're gonna do a little cooking. We're gonna do a little camping. We're gonna have some fun, but I wanted to unbox some of this stuff for the first time from Sportsman's Guide to camp out here overnight with Gypsy and do some fishing while we're camping. And I brought backups like my hammock and things like that in case something doesn't work out. You never want to take brand new camp gear out of the box to a campsite two or three hours from your house and not have any backups because if something fails, you're in a bad situation. So I brought my hammock out here. There's a couple trees right here. I can string my hammock between if I needed to, but I want to try out this new camp gear. So I brought a one pole style tent out here. I brought a fire pit out here. I don't know what we're going to be able to use because I didn't bring any firewood with me. I don't see a whole lot available right around here. So I'm end up using a camp stove for that. But I also brought a setup of table and chairs that comes from Sportsman's Guide, a cot from Sportsman's Guide to go inside the tent, things like that. So I thought we'd pull that stuff out, start setting it up, kind of walk through it with you guys as we go. Stay with us. Well, we've got a decent table right here at the campsite. So we'll throw this tent bag up on top of this. You can see it comes in a nice nylon tent bag. That clip shut, like most tents, I'm sure. Sportsman's Guide, Guide Gear brand. Definitely has a floor in it. You can see that by the way it's rolled up. So, let's see what we got. We'll take her over here and roll her out on the ground. All right, looks like we got a bag of pole. Probably the one pole, the one pole design tent and a bag of steaks. And I rolled it out here on the ground. So we'll figure out the footprint of this thing and figure out where the front and the back is. And we'll go from there. Now this looks like our door right here in the front. So we'll uh, get the front print staked out and then we'll shove the one pole in there and see how she works. All right, so this pole's just shock corded together. It's got a metal shock cord in there. It's got a lantern hanger on it. I like that. It's non-adjustable, so it is the size it's supposed to be. And we're just gonna stick it up the middle here and find out what happens. That truly was honestly about a five minute initial setup of this tent. Now, you've got windows and things like that need to be rolled up on the inside, tethered up. You've got guy lines all the way around to pull the sides out to be staked in. But the initial setup of this tent is so dead simple, I can't even believe it. I mean, it is stake out the perimeter, get out the pole, put the pole up the middle, stand it up, and you're basically ready to start camping. Now the guy line system on this is pretty nice. You've got a Velcro point here where you can tuck a bundle guy line in. And the guy line is tethered here so that it pulls high and low at the same time. And then you've got an automatic tensioner that's already on here. You just gotta pull it out to the point you want it. Give ourselves some tension here. Stake it in the ground and it pulls that whole side out really well. Talked about these rain gusses on this tent and how you can so one of the things I really like about this tent as well is it's got these 
openings on the side. And this is on three sides. You've got a window above that you close from the inside. And you've got a mesh here so that you get updraft through the ventilation at the top of the tent. And you've got a gusseted section here so you could guide that thing out and still get updraft underneath but get rain protection. Or you can zip it all the way down to the closed position like this for the maximum amount of wind protection and rain protection. Or if you're not worried about the weather, you can just take this thing and tuck it up in and roll it up. And just like the doors, it has a toggle and loop system up here to be able to leave it open all the way. So the next piece of guide gear stuff I've got here is this guide gear cot. It goes right inside that one pole tent. Got a nice carrying strap, heavy duty bag. And it's a fold out cot system, very much like camp chairs. I'm just gonna lay this thing up on the table here and pull it out of the bag. There you go. You got a nice big cot that you can throw inside your tent. Got a gear pouch here on the side of it. You see it's brand new. It's gonna be nice and comfortable. It locks in place, just like that. Perfect. All right, so there's a cot inside. It's a tight fit, but if you move that here toward the center, it would be fine. Or stuck it sideways in here like this would be fine. We'll put it to the very back. It would be fine. We're going to put it on the side over here. We'll let Gypsy sleep right beside us tonight. Call that good. All right. Next piece of kit they sent us for this camp was a guide gear air mattress. And it's just a folding air mattress, but it's a pretty wide one. And it's pretty heavy duty. So we're just going to unroll it. Open the valves, lay it on the cot, let it blow up. All right. Pretty simple one here. These straps are elastic, so just take them off. Set them aside. We'll put them in the pocket of our cot. Roll this bad boy out. You can see it's got a good rubberized surface on the bottom and a softer surface on the top. And roll this dude out. Open up our valves. Let it self-inflate. There she goes. You can hear it. You're sleeping like a king in here tonight, for sure. Man, oh man. Okay, one thing I always bring with me is a weather radio. This one's got the solar panel, the crank. It's got a rechargeable battery, plus it takes AA batteries. It's got two shortwave bands. AM, FM, and weather. Always a good thing to have with you when you're traveling off grid. This area that we're camping in tonight with Jip. He's over here laying down, taking a nap right now with a bone. This area that we're camped in right now has absolutely no service whatsoever. So we are basically at the mercy of this radio to tell us what's going on with the weather. All right, as with most camping trips, had to rain a little bit. So we batten down the hatches here. I'm just baiting up the old pole with some hot dog here to go fishing. That's okay. We'll uh, wait. Let's quit rain a little bit and we'll get after it. Oh, good. Get used to it, man. All right, there's channel cat number one for the day. Right there among them stumps. This little beef blood bait. The ugly stick never fails. Channel cat number two. We're out there by the structure in between the two structures out there.
out of them weeds. Time to horse them out of them weeds. And all those weeds all over my all over my sinkers here make him feel three times heavier than he is. And he's at the bottom of all that mess. Nice little channel cat though. Definitely eating size for sure. That didn't take long. Might have let go of it though. Might not have got to him in time. Oh, I got him. All right. You can see the weeds here. He's not as big. He's not as big. But that's number four for the day. Nice channel cat. That's a nice channel cat right there. Beauty. Now that bobber out there is slack on the line. It's not stopped on anything. And I use that bobber to kind of gauge when I get a hit. Because a lot of times it'll start eating up line. That bob will ride backwards on the line. You can see it going backwards against the current when a fish is taken off with your stuff. So I use that as a strike indicator before I even have to worry about it bending my rod over and all that stuff because they've got it in their mouth and swallowed it to the gullet. I can get them when they first pick it up, take off with it, and set the hook just by watching that bobber. Right. Another one right there. Sorry I didn't catch the uh, strike on film. I want you guys to see how this bobber acts as a strike indicator, but we'll get there in a minute. Didn't, didn't get the hook too deep. It'd be pretty easy to get it out. Get underneath that fin there. Might have to have a pair of pliers on it, dude. Might be in the jawbone. Almost got her. There we go. Also got a skillet at the bottom, and that's what we're going to use tonight. Pathfinder 8 inch skillet. And use that to cook some flat iron steak on tonight. Get that on top of the old Coleman stove here. Get things set up. And go. There's the deal. We gotta cook some bacon in this bad boy before we can cook steak in it. Cause we want some grease. We want that bacon flavor. So okay, we're gonna get some bacon tips in here. This is just bits and pieces. Most of fat, but I love it. it gives good bacon flavor in there and a good amount of grease at the same time. All right, bacon frying up in here. Get that done. Get the skillet nice and hot. That's the secret to something like a flat iron steak is get the skillet nice and hot first. Bacon grease is gonna flavor that bad boy for us. We got plenty of heat now, so. About to stick a couple flat irons up in here. Man, look at the marbling in that thing. Oh, son. I hurt my feelings just here. Golly. Woo! Man. All right. Ready for a flip? Son. Turn that heat up just a shade on that, dude. One click on this bad boy is a ton, I can tell you. All right, a little bit of seasoning on here on this side. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh man, bacon's awesome. Right, let me pull these bad boys out. Ooh, you son. Put two more in. Look out. That bad boy. Man, oh man. Perfect. Mm. 
Almost got the <laughs> second one done. <laughs> oh, dude, that's so good. Woo! All right, so out here fishing tonight with Jake Trent, a little overnighter. Nice little lake. We got the tent set up. Cooked some dinner already. Now we're having a little catfish tournament. I got a hand line in. He's got a hand line in. Let's we'll see what happens here. I've got my main pole out as well, but I got a hand line sitting right down there in a piece of PVC. Hoping to catch a nice little channel cat on a hand line tonight as well. Channel cat. That's number seven for the day, I think. All right, here we are. Me and the Jip. Hanging out in camp. Got the guide gear tent. Set up on the lake back there. Been catching fish all day. Got like eight catfish today. And uh, just kind of chilling out now, waiting for it to get dark. Take her to bed a little bit. And Jake just drove out a couple miles to get service. Definitely a dead zone in this place for sure. But we had a good dinner. Did a little fishing after dinner. I caught a couple more fish. Tomorrow morning, we'll fix a really cool breakfast I'll show you guys. It's real easy to make, real cheap, and really common. I'll show you the inside of this tent tonight, that lantern hanger. We'll get in there with Jeff here in a little while. Let me turn my light out. All right, there's the guide gear tent. Got the light hanging on the nice little hook on the center pole there that comes with the tent. Well lit inside there with that lantern and get gypsy in there i got her bed in there on the side there you can see it get jip in there and i got the guy gear caught mattress ready to rock all right so i took that cot moving mattress over here because the cot wasn't comfortable to me it may have just been last night gypsy slept at the end of it she didn't sleep in her bed but i ended up throwing the mattress over here that was more comfortable for me we got a little rain, rain last night here and there, not too much. The tent did really, really well. Happy with that. And uh, yeah, all in all, wasn't too bad of a night. I'm starting to pack this up this morning. They, you know, they give you plenty of room in these bags and stuff to come with this guy here equipment. You had two chairs and a table in there. That one bag went right back in as easy as it came out. So that tent rolled up that easy, it'd be a good thing. Pretty soon here, fixing to make some breakfast, but I'm gonna get some of my stuff packed up first. All right, so I'm getting ready to pull this tent down this morning. Got all the rest of the stuff packed up. All went up really, really easy. Just as easy as it came out, really. But there's no way you can just sit there and be sold on something without having a fault, because everything's got faults. And this tent's really, really nice, no question about it. it goes up fast, it'll come down fast. Very, very well-built tent. The only problem I have with this style tent, it's not really a fault of this tent, it's this style tent is that the walls are all at an angle because you have like a pyramid design. What that means is that your door's at an angle. And in the summertime, when you want to sleep with the flaps of the door open and just a screen shut, if it rains, you're getting wet. End of story. And I ended up twice last night having to wake up in the middle of the night because it was a pop-up shower and close these doors, wait for it to quit raining, open them up again, and wait for the next pop-up shower because rain was getting in the floor of the shelter when I was sleeping. So... That's one inherent issue that you're going to have with a shelter like this is you're going to have to either sleep with the door shut or you're going to have to wake up if it rains and shut the door, the flaps on the door, storm flaps, because you're going to get rain in there with that angle. All right, I'm getting ready to cook uh, Jake some breakfast this morning. And we're going to make uh, something that's going to be so simple and so easy, you're going to be shocked. So let me get some ingredients out here. Stay with me. All right. Hostess cinnamon streusel coffee cake, main ingredient in this wonderful recipe. So, what are we gonna do here? Well, I'll tell you what. You're gonna get this thing here lit. Maybe. And then we're gonna get the old Pathfinder skillet on here. I'm telling you, Pathfinder skillet, 64 ounce bush pot, and then a whole lot else you need at a campsite. All right, now, we need some butter. Why do we need butter? Because we're gonna fry these bad puppies, that's why. Oh my. Cinnamon streusel, individual wrapped, wonderful cakes out here. This is the kind of stuff that 
Makes you cry at campsites. All right, put that aside. Bumper up one. Carefully open this bad boy. Oh yeah. Stick in the hot butter. Two at a time. Oh show. A little more butter. Oh yeah, the drippings, that's what you want. It just smells good. All right. Oh, got a pine needle in there. Bite him see. Might need to go down one heat setting here. A little hot. And we're a little off level, so we'll keep it to the one side. We're waiting on Jake over here. Get his stuff over here so he can eat. He's like some kid washing his dishes from yesterday and today. Driving me crazy. Got this fried streusel ready for him. He's not back yet. Okay, the secret of the streusel. Number one is... You need a little drizzle. Number two. Ho, 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 ho. Look at that. <clears throat> that is to die for. <laughs> 